Al Jazeera Arabic Al Jazeera translate Al Jazeera IPA AL D Ash Zr literally the island though referring to the Arabian Peninsula in context also known as JSC Jazeera Satellite Channel is a state funded broadcaster in Doha Qatar owned by the Al Jazeera Media Network Initially launched as an Arabic news and current affairs satellite TV channel, Al Jazeera has since expanded into a network with several outlets, including the Internet and specialty television channels in multiple languages. Al Jazeera Media Network is a major global news organization, with 80 bureaus around the world. The original Al Jazeera Arabic channel's willingness to broadcast dissenting views, for example on call-in shows, created controversies in the Arab states of the Persian Gulf. The station gained worldwide attention following the outbreak of the war in Afghanistan, when its office there was the only channel to cover the war live. Al Jazeera Media Network is owned by the government of Qatar. Al Jazeera Media Network has stated that they are editorially independent from the government of Qatar as the network is funded through loans and grants rather than government subsidies. Critics have accused Al Jazeera of being a propaganda outlet for the Qatari government. The network is sometimes perceived to have mainly Islamist perspectives, promoting the Muslim Brotherhood, and having a pro-Sunni and an anti-Shia bias in its reporting of regional issues. However, Al Jazeera insists it covers all sides of a debate, it says it presents Israel's view, Iran's view and even aired videos released by Osama bin Laden. In June 2017, the Saudi, Emirati, Bahraini, and Egyptian governments demanded the closure of the news station as one of 13 demands made to Qatar during the 2017 Qatar crisis. Other media networks have spoken out in support of the network. According to The Atlantic magazine, Al Jazeera presents a far more moderate, westernized face than Islamic jihadism or rigid Sunni orthodoxy, and though the network has been criticized as an Islamist stalking horse. It actually features very little specifically religious content in its broadcasts. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Etymology. In Arabic, Al Jazeera literally means the island. However, it refers here to the Arabian Peninsula, which is Shbih al Jazirat al Arabit Sib al Jazeera al Arabiya, abbreviated to al Jazirat al Arabit al Jazeera al Arabiya. Compare the Arabic name al Jazeera, Arabic al Jazirat lit. The island for Upper Mesopotamia, another area of land almost entirely surrounded by water. Topic: History. Topic: Launch. Al Jazeera Satellite Channel, now known as Asia, was launched on 1 November 1996 following the closure of the BBC's Arabic-language television station, a joint venture with Orbit Communications Company. The BBC channel had closed after a year and a half when the Iranian government attempted to suppress information, including a graphic report on executions and prominent dissident views. The Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Hamid bin Khalifa, provided a loan of 500 million Qatari rials $137 million to sustain Al Jazeera through its first five years, as Hugh Miles detailed in his book Al Jazeera, the inside story of the Arab news channel that is challenging the West. Shares were held by private investors as well as the Qatar government. Al Jazeera's first day on the air was 1 November 1996. It offered six hours of programming per day, increased to 12 hours by the end of 1997. It was broadcast to the immediate neighborhood as a terrestrial signal, and on cable, as well as through satellites which was also free to users in the Arab world, although Qatar, and many other Arab countries, barred private individuals from having satellite dishes until 2001. At the time of the Al Jazeera Media Network launch Arabzat was the only satellite broadcasting to the Middle East, and for the first year could only offer Al Jazeera a weak C-band transponder that needed a large satellite dish for reception. A more powerful Ku band transponder became available as a peace offering after its user, Canal France International, accidentally beamed 30 minutes of pornography into ultra conservative Saudi Arabia. Al Jazeera was not the first such broadcaster in the Middle East. A number had appeared since the Arabzat satellite, a Saudi Arabia based venture of 21 Arab governments, took orbit in 1985. The unfolding of Operation Desert Storm on CNN International underscored the power of live television in current events. 
while other local broadcasters in the region would assiduously avoid material embarrassing to their home governments Qatar had its own official TV station as well, Al Jazeera was pitched as an impartial news source and platform for discussing issues relating to the Arab world. In presenting, "...the opinion and the other opinion," the station's motto, it did not take long for Al Jazeera to shock local viewers by presenting Israelis speaking Hebrew on Arab television for the first time. Lively and far-ranging talk shows, particularly a popular, confrontational one called The Opposite Direction, were a constant source of controversy regarding issues of morality and religion. This prompted a torrent of criticism from the conservative voices among the region's press. It also led to official complaints and censures from neighboring governments. Some jammed Al Jazeera's terrestrial broadcast or expelled its correspondents. In 1999, the Algerian government reportedly cut power to several major cities in order to censor one broadcast. There were also commercial repercussions. Saudi Arabia reportedly pressured advertisers to avoid the channel, to great effect. Al Jazeera was the only international news network to have correspondence in Iraq during the Operation Desert Fox bombing campaign in 1998. In a precursor of a pattern to follow, its exclusive video clips were highly prized by Western media. Topic. Around the clock The 1st of January 1999 was Al Jazeera's first day of 24-hour broadcasting. Employment had more than tripled in one year to 500 employees, and the agency had bureaus at a dozen sites as far as EU and Russia. Its annual budget was estimated at about $25 million at the time. However controversial, Al Jazeera was rapidly becoming one of the most influential news agencies in the whole region. Eager for news beyond the official versions of events, Arabs became dedicated viewers. A 2000 estimate pegged nightly viewership at 35 million, ranking Al Jazeera first in the Arab world, over the Saudi Arabia-sponsored Middle East Broadcasting Center MBC and London's Arab News Network AN. There were about 70 satellite or terrestrial channels being broadcast to the Middle East, most of them in Arabic. Al Jazeera launched a free Arabic-language website in January 2001. In addition, the TV feed was soon available in United Kingdom for the first time via British Sky Broadcasting. Topic. War in Afghanistan Al Jazeera came to the attention of many in the West during the hunt for Osama bin Laden and the Taliban in Afghanistan after the 11th of September 2001 attacks on the United States. It aired videos it received from Osama bin Laden and the Taliban, deeming new footage of the world's most wanted fugitives to be newsworthy. Some criticized the network for giving a voice to terrorists. Al Jazeera's Washington, D.C., bureau chief, Hafez al-Mirazi, compared the situation to that of the Unabomber's messages in the New York Times. The network said it had been given the tapes because it had a large Arab audience. Many other TV networks were eager to acquire the same footage. CNN International had exclusive rights to it for six hours before other networks could broadcast, a provision that was broken by the others on at least one controversial occasion. Prime Minister Tony Blair soon appeared on an Al Jazeera talk show on 14 November 2001 to state Britain's case for pursuing the Taliban into Afghanistan. Al Jazeera's prominence rose during the war in Afghanistan because it had opened a bureau in Kabul before the war began. This gave it better access for videotaping events than other networks, which bought Al Jazeera's footage, sometimes for as much as $250,000. The Kabul office was destroyed by United States bombs in 2001. Looking to stay ahead of possible future conflicts, Al Jazeera then opened bureau in other troubled spots. The network remained dependent on government support in 2002, with a budget of $40 million and ad revenues of about $8 million. It also took in fees for sharing its news feed with other networks. It had an estimated 45 million viewers around the world. Al Jazeera soon had to contend with a new rival, Al Arabiya, an offshoot of the Middle East Broadcasting Center, which was set up in nearby Dubai with Saudi financial backing. 2003 Iraq War Before and during the United States-led invasion of Iraq, where Al Jazeera had a presence since 1997, the network's facilities and footage were again highly sought by international networks. 
The channel and its website also were seeing unprecedented attention from viewers looking for alternatives to embedded reporting and military press conferences. Al Jazeera moved its sports coverage to a new, separate channel on 1 November 2003, allowing for more news and public affairs programming on the original channel. An English-language website had launched earlier in March 2003. The channel had about 1,300 to 1,400 employees, its newsroom editor told The New York Times. There were 23 bureaux around the world and 70 foreign correspondents, with 450 journalists in all. On 1 April 2003, a United States plane fired on Al Jazeera's Baghdad bureau, killing reporter Tarek Ayoub. The attack was called a mistake, however, Qatar had supplied the U.S. with a precise map of the location of the bureau in order to spare it from attack. Afshan Ratansi became the channel's first English language broadcast journalist after he left the BBC Today program, after the death of UK government scientist David Kelly. 2017 Qatar diplomatic crisis The closing of the Al Jazeera media network was one of the terms of diplomatic re-establishment put forward by Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt during the 2017 Qatar diplomatic crisis. On the 23rd of June 2017, the countries that cut ties to Qatar issued a list of demands to end the major crisis, insisting that Qatar shut down the Al Jazeera network, close a Turkish military base and scale down ties with Iran. The call, included in a list of 13 points, read shut down Al Jazeera and its affiliate stations. Agencies, media outlets, journalists and media rights organizations have decried the demands to close Al Jazeera as attempts to curb press freedom, including Reporters Without Borders, CPJ, IFEX, The Guardian and The New York Times. Earlier, Saudi and the UAE blocked Al Jazeera websites, Saudi Arabia closed Al Jazeera's bureau in Riyadh and halted its operating license, accusing the network of promoting terrorist groups. In the region, and Jordan also revoked the license for Al Jazeera. Saudi Arabia also banned hotels from airing Al Jazeera, threatening fines of up to $26,000 for violators. On 6 June, just days after the Saudi led group had cut ties with Qatar, Al Jazeera was a victim of a cyber attack on all of its platforms. Qatari Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mohammed bin Abdulrahman bin Jassim al Thani, has said Doha will not discuss the status of Al Jazeera in any negotiations. Doha rejects discussing any matter related to Al Jazeera Channel as it considers it an internal affair. Qatar News Agency quoted the Foreign Minister as saying, Decisions concerning the Qatari internal affairs are Qatari sovereignty, and no one has to interfere with them." On 24 November 2017 UAE's head of security Lt. Gen. Dahi Kalfin blamed 2017 Sinai attack on Al Jazeera and called for bombing of Al Jazeera by Saudi-led coalition. Organization The original Al Jazeera channel was launched 1 November 1996 by an Amiri decree with a loan of 500 million Qatari rials $137 million from the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Hamid bin Khalifa. By securing its funding through loans or grants rather than direct government subsidies, the channel seeks to maintain independent editorial policy. The channel began broadcasting in late 1996, with many staff joining from the BBC World Service's Saudi co-owned Arabic-language TV station, which had shut down on 1 April 1996 after two years of operation because of censorship demands by the Saudi Arabian government. The Al Jazeera logo is a decorative representation of the network's name written using Arabic calligraphy. It was selected by the station's founder, Amir of Qatar Sheikh Hamid bin Khalifa, as the winning entry in a design competition. Topic. Staff Al Jazeera restructured its operations to form a network that contains all their different channels. Wada Confer, the then managing director of the Arabic channel, was appointed as the director general of Al Jazeera Media Network. He also acted as the managing director of the original Arabic channel. Confer resigned on 20 September 2011 proclaiming that he had achieved his original goals, and that eight years was enough time for any leader of an organization, in an interview aired on Al Jazeera English. 
Ahmed bin Jassim Al Thani replaced Confer and served as the Director General of the Channel from September 2011 to June 2013 when he was appointed Minister of Economy and Trade. The Chairman of the Channel is Hamid bin Thamer Al Thani. The Director General and Editor in Chief of the Arabic website is Mostafa Suag, who replaced Ahmed Sheikh as Editor in Chief. It has more than 100 editorial staff. The Managing Director of Al Jazeera English is Al Ansti. Muhammad Nanabe became editor-in-chief of the English-language site in 2009. Previous editors include Beat Witchy and Russell Merriman. Prominent on-air personalities include Faisal al qasim host of the talk show The Opposite Direction, Ahmed Mansur, host of the show Without Borders Hudud, and Sami Haddad. Its former Iran and Beirut bureau chief was Ghassan bin Jido. He became an influential figure on Al Jazeera with his program High War Mafta, one of the most frequently watched programs. He also interviewed Nasrallah in 2007 and produced a documentary about Hezbollah. Some suggested that he would even replace Wada Confer. Bin Jido resigned after political disagreements with the station. Osama Al Bayati is an art director for film and television specialized in network branding. Osama made several projects that received Promax awards in Dubai, Los Angeles and Europe. Reach Many governments in the Middle East deploy state-run media or government censorship to impact local media coverage and public opinion, leading to international objections regarding press freedom and biased media coverage. Some scholars and commentators use the notion of contextual objectivity, which highlights the tension between objectivity and audience appeal, to describe the station's controversial yet popular news approach. Increasingly, Al Jazeera Media Network's exclusive interviews and other footage are being rebroadcast in American, British, and other Western media outlets such as CNN and the BBC. In January 2003, the BBC announced that it had signed an agreement with Al Jazeera for sharing facilities and information, including news footage. Al Jazeera's availability via satellite throughout the Middle East changed the television landscape of the region. Prior to the arrival of Al Jazeera, many Middle Eastern citizens were unable to watch TV channels other than state controlled national TV stations. Al Jazeera introduced a level of freedom of speech on TV that was previously unheard of in many of these countries. Al Jazeera presented controversial views regarding the governments of many Arab states on the Persian Gulf, including Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain and Qatar. It also presented controversial views about Syria's relationship with Lebanon, and the Egyptian judiciary. Critics accused Al Jazeera media network of sensationalism in order to increase its audience share. Al Jazeera's broadcasts have sometimes resulted in drastic action, for example, when, on 27 January 1999, critics of the Algerian government appeared on the channel's live program El Itija El Maukas, the opposite direction. The Algerian government cut the electricity supply to large parts of the capital Algiers and allegedly also to large parts of the country to prevent the program from being seen. By and large, however, Al Jazeera's popularity can be more substantively attributed to its credible and in-depth coverage of issues considered to be of great importance to the international Arab population, many of which received minimal attention from other outlets, such as, the Palestinian perspective on the Second Intifada, the experiences of Iraqis living through the Iraq War, and the exclusive broadcast of tapes produced by Osama bin Laden. At the time of the aforementioned incident in Algeria, Al Jazeera Media Network was not yet generally known in the Western world, but where it was known, opinion was often favorable and Al Jazeera claimed to be the only politically independent television station in the Middle East. However, it was not until late 2001 that Al Jazeera achieved worldwide recognition, when it broadcast video statements by Al-Qaeda leaders. Some observers have argued that Al Jazeera Media Network has formidable authority as an opinion maker. Noah Bonsi and Jeb Kugler, for example, writing in the Columbia Journalism Review, argue that the way in which the station covers any future Israeli-Palestinian peace deal could well determine whether or not that deal is actually accepted by the Palestinian public. Al Jazeera's broad availability in the Arab world, operate ing with less constraint than almost any other Arab outlet, and remain ing the most popular channel in the region has been perceived as playing a part in the Arab Spring, including the Tunisian and Egyptian revolutions. The New York Times stated in January 2011, 
The protests rocking the Arab world this week have one thread uniting them, Al Jazeera whose aggressive coverage has helped propel insurgent emotions from one capital to the next." The newspaper quoted Mark Lynch, a professor of Middle East Studies at George Washington University, they did not cause these events, but it's almost impossible to imagine all this happening without Al Jazeera. With Al Jazeera's growing global outreach and influence, some scholars including Adil Iskander have described the station as a transformation of the very definition of Alternative media, Al Jazeera presents a new direction in the discourse of global news flow and shows voices underrepresented by traditional mainstream media regardless global imbalances in the flow of information. <laughs> Expansion outside the Middle East In 2011 Al Jazeera Media Network launched Al Jazeera Balkans based in Sarajevo and serving Bosnia and Herzegovina in Bosnian, Serbian and Croatian. The look and feel of the network is similar to Al Jazeera English. Al Jazeera launched a Turkish language news website in 2014, it was shut down on 3 May 2017. Al Jazeera English In 2003 Al Jazeera hired its first English-language journalists, among whom was Afshan Ratansi, from the BBC's Today programme. In March 2003 it launched an English-language website. On 4 July 2005 Al Jazeera officially announced plans to launch a new English-language satellite service to be called Al Jazeera International. The new channel started at 12 HGMT on 15 November 2006 under the name Al Jazeera English and has broadcast centres in Doha next to the original Al Jazeera headquarters and broadcast centre, London, Kuala Lumpur and Washington, D.C. The channel is a 24-hour, 7 days a week news channel, with 12 hours broadcast from Doha, and 4 hours each from London, Kuala Lumpur, and Washington, D.C. Al Jazeera launched an English language channel, originally called Al Jazeera International, in 2006. Among its staff were journalists hired from ABC's Nightline and other top news outfits. Josh Rushing, a former media handler for CENTCOM during the Iraq War, agreed to provide commentary. David Frost was also on board. In an interesting technical feat, the broadcast of the new operation was handed off between bases in Doha, London, Washington DC, and Kuala Lumpur on a daily cycle. The new English-language venture faced considerable regulatory and commercial hurdles in the North America market for its perceived sympathy with extremist causes. At the same time, others felt Al Jazeera's competitive advantage lay in programming in the Arabic language. There were hundreds of millions of potential viewers among the non-Arabic language speaking Muslims in Europe and Asia, however, and many others who might be interested in seeing news from the Middle East read by local voices. If the venture panned out, it would extend the influence of Al Jazeera, and tiny Qatar, beyond even what had been achieved in the station's first decade. In an interesting twist of fate, the BBC World Service was preparing to launch its own Arabic language station in 2007. Today, evidence of U.S. antipathy at the Arabic network has dissipated significantly, though not entirely, several analysts say. Al Jazeera America In January 2013, Al Jazeera Media Network purchased Current TV, which was partially owned by former U.S. Vice President Al Gore. Using part of Current TV's infrastructure, Al Jazeera launched an American news channel on 20 August 2013. Though Current TV had large distribution throughout the United States on cable and satellite television, it averaged only 28,000 viewers at any time. The acquisition of Current TV by Al Jazeera allowed Time Warner Cable to drop the network due to its low ratings, but they released a statement saying that they would consider carrying the channel after they evaluated whether it made sense for their customers. Time Warner Cable later began carrying Al Jazeera America in December 2013. In August 2014 Gore and fellow shareholder Joel Hyatt launched a lawsuit against Al Jazeera claiming a residual payment of $65 million of the sale proceeds, due in 2014, remained unpaid. Al Jazeera later announced a countersuit. 
In 2016, the case was settled outside of court on the basis of a mutual agreement, under which, Gore and Hyatt had their claims waived. Al Jazeera was ordered to pay the $2.35 million in legal fees incurred by the plaintiffs, and the network forfeited its rights to pursue any indemnification claims related to the ordeal. On 13 January 2016, Al Jazeera America CEO Al Anstey announced that the network would cease operations on 12 April 2016, citing the economic landscape. Topic: Sport channels. BN Sports, formerly Al Jazeera Sport Channels, was legally separated from Al Jazeera Media Network on the 1st of January 2014 and is now controlled by Bind Media Group. BN Sports currently operates three channels in France: Bind Sport One, Bind Sport Two, and Bind Sport Max, and launched two channels in the United States, English and Spanish, in August 2012. The network also has a Canadian channel and holds Canadian broadcast rights to several sports properties. The network also has an Australian channel. Bind Sport holds the rights to broadcast major football tournaments on French television, including Ligue 1, Bundesliga, the UEFA Champions League, and the European Football Championships. In the United States and Canada, Bind Sport holds the rights to broadcast La Liga, Serie A, Ligue 1, Copa del Rey, South American World Cup qualifier, and English Championship matches, in addition to Barca TV. In October 2009, Al Jazeera acquired six sports channels of the art. On 26 November 2009, Al Jazeera English received approval from the CRTC, which enables Al Jazeera English to broadcast via satellite in Canada. Topic. Availability The original Al Jazeera channel is available worldwide through various satellite and cable systems. For availability info of the Al Jazeera Network's other TV channels, see their respective articles. Segments of Al Jazeera English are uploaded to YouTube, Europe, Northern Africa and the Middle East. Al Jazeera can be freely viewed with a DVBS receiver in Europe, Northern Africa and the Middle East as it is broadcast on the Astra 1M, Eutelsat Hot Bird 13A, Eutelsat 10A, Badr 4 Turksat 2A, Thor 6 Nilesat 102, Hispasat 1C and Eutelsat 28A satellites. The Optus C1 satellite in Australia carries the channel for free and from July 2012 is available at no extra charge to all subscribers to Australia's Foxtel Pay TV service. Canada. Al Jazeera is available in Canada on Bell Channel 516, as part of the package, International News I. Al Jazeera is available on Rogers Cable individually. Al Jazeera is also available on Shaw Cable TV Channel 513, as part of the package, Multicultural. India. On 7 December 2010, Al Jazeera said its English language service has got a downlink license to broadcast in India. Satellite and cable companies would therefore be allowed to broadcast Al Jazeera in the country. The broadcaster will be launched soon on Dish TV, and is considering a Hindi language channel, United Kingdom. Al Jazeera English is available on the Sky and Freesat satellite platforms, as well as the standard terrestrial service branded Freeview, thus making it available to the vast majority of UK households. On 26 November 2013 it launched a HD simulcast on certain terrestrial transmitters, United States. Al Jazeera English is mainly available online via its live stream on its website, DVBS, Galaxy 19 and Galaxy 23C band satellites. Following the launch of Al Jazeera America in 2013 until 2016 when the channel folded, Al Jazeera English was not available in the United States. It had been available through live streaming over the Al Jazeera website, DVBS, Galaxy 19, Free to Air and Galaxy 23 satellites, and it had been broadcast over the air in the Washington DC DMA by WNVC on Digital Channel 30-5, and on Digital Channel 48.2 in the New York metro area, but those broadcasts were discontinued on 20 August 2013. Al Jazeera English had also been available to cable TV viewers in Toledo, Ohio, Burlington, Vermont, New York City WRNN rebroadcast, Washington State, and Washington, D.C. a rebroadcast of WNVC's feed, but those sources were switched to Al Jazeera America on 20 August 2013. Many analysts had considered the limited availability of Al Jazeera English in the United States to be effectively a blackout. 
The live stream and programming over the Internet that had been geoblocked was made available to viewers in the United States again in September, 2016. Online. All Jazeera English can be viewed over the Internet from their official website. The low-resolution version is available free of charge to users of computers and video streaming boxes, and the high-resolution version is available under subscription fees through partner sites. Al Jazeera's English division has also partnered with LiveStation for Internet-based broadcasting. This enables Al Jazeera English and Al Jazeera Live to be watched worldwide, with the exception of English in the United States. Topic. On the web Al Jazeera Media Network's web-based service is accessible subscription-free throughout the world, at a variety of websites. The station launched an English-language edition of its online content in March 2003. This English-language website was relaunched on 15 November 2006, along with the launch of Al Jazeera English. The English and Arabic sections are editorially distinct, with their own selection of news and comment. Al Jazeera and Al Jazeera English are streamed live on the official site, as well as on YouTube. On 13 April 2009 Al Jazeera launched versions of its English and Arabic sites suitable for mobile devices. The Arabic version of the site was brought offline for about 10 hours by an FBI raid on its ISP, Infocom Corporation, on 5 September 2001. Infocom was later convicted of exporting to Syria and Gaddafi ruled Libya, of knowingly being invested in by a Hamas member both of which are illegal in the United States, and of underpaying customs duties. In 2014 Al Jazeera Media Network launched an online-only channel called AJ+. The channel is based out of the former current TV studios in San Francisco and has outposts in Doha, Kuala Lumpur and other locations. It is independent of all of Al Jazeera's other channels and is mostly in an on-demand format. The channel launched on 13 June 2014 on with a preview on YouTube. This was followed in 2017 by the launch of Jetty, a podcast network which is also based out of the former current TV studios in San Francisco. Al Jazeera recently launched a Mandarin language news website. It is the first Arabic news provider to target the Chinese audience. The staff of the project will be in contact with their audience via Chinese social media like Weibo, Meipai and WeChat. Topic. Creative Commons On 13 January 2009 Al Jazeera Media Network released some of its broadcast quality footage from Gaza under a Creative Commons license. Contrary to business, all rights reserved. Standards, the license invites third parties, including rival broadcasters, to reuse and remix the footage, so long as Al Jazeera is credited. The videos are hosted on Blip. TV, which allows easy downloading and integration with Miro. Al Jazeera Media Network also offers over 2,000 Creative Commons licensed still photos at their Flickr account. Topic. Citizen journalism Al Jazeera Media Network accepts user-submitted photos and videos about news events through your media page, and this content may be featured on the website or in broadcasts. The channel used the Ushahidi platform to collect information and reports about the Gaza War, through Twitter, SMS and the website. Topic. Plans Future projects in other languages include Al Jazeera Urdu, an Urdu language channel to cater mainly to Pakistanis. A Kiswahili service called Al Jazeera Kiswahili was to be based in Nairobi and broadcast in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. However, those plans were cancelled due to budget constraints. The channel also has plans to launch a Spanish language news network to cater mainly to Spain and Hispanic America, like the Iranian cable TV network Hispan TV. Al Jazeera has also been reported to be planning to launch an international newspaper. Al Jazeera Arabic began using a chroma key studio on 13 September 2009. Similar to Sky News, Al Jazeera broadcast from that studio while the channel's main newsroom was given a new look. The channel relaunched, with new graphics and music along with a new studio, on 1 November 2009, the 13th birthday of the channel. Topic. Controversies associated with Al Jazeera 
While Al Jazeera has a large audience in the Middle East, the organization and the original Arabic channel in particular have been criticized and involved in a number of controversies. Topic: <laughs> Bahrain In May 2000 Bahrain banned Al Jazeera's broadcasts due to the channel's comments about Bahrain's municipal elections, labeling it as, "...serving Zionism". USA Several Al Jazeera staff were killed by U.S. military, "...friendly fire", incidents. The United States-controlled Iraqi interim government closed the offices of Al Jazeera in Baghdad in August 2004 during the United States occupation on Iraq. Then United States appointed Iraqi Prime Minister Iyad Alawi accused the channel of inciting hatred in the country. At the end of April 2013, the Iraqi government led by Nouri al-Maliki once again ordered Al Jazeera to stop broadcasting due to the alleged role of the channel in encouraging the sectarian unrest. In response to the restrictions imposed by Al Maliki, Al Jazeera issued a statement in which the organization expressed its astonishment at the development, and reiterated their assertion that, We cover all sides of the stories in Iraq, and have done for many years. The network further objected to the ban, saying, The fact that so many channels have been hit all at once though suggests this is an indiscriminate decision. We urge the authorities to uphold freedom for the media to report the important stories taking place in Iraq. Topic: <inaudible> Egypt's Tahrir Square. During the 2011 Egyptian protests on the 30th of January, the Egyptian government ordered the TV channel to close its offices. The next day Egyptian security forces arrested six Al Jazeera journalists for several hours and seized their camera equipment. There were also reports of disruption in Al Jazeera Mubashir's broadcast to Egypt. The channel was also criticized for being sympathetic to Mohamed Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood and former IAEA director Mohamed Elberadeh. It was closed for the same reasons in September 2013. 22 members of staff of Al Jazeera's Egyptian Bureau announced their resignation on 8 July 2013, citing biased coverage of the ongoing Egyptian power redistribution in favor of the Muslim Brotherhood. Al Jazeera says that the resignations were due to pressure from the Egyptian military. <inaudible> Syria Al Jazeera has been criticized over unfair coverage of the Syrian civil war. The channel's reporting has been described as largely supportive of the rebels, while demonizing the Syrian government. The Lebanese newspaper as Safir cited outtakes of interviews showing that the channel's staff coached Syrian eyewitnesses and fabricated reports of oppression by Syria's government. In January 2013, a former Al Jazeera employee from Syria stated their belief that there was ongoing strong pressure to conform to biased coverage of the Syrian civil war. However, according to Pew Research Center study, in its coverage of the Syrian crisis, Al Jazeera America cable news channel provided viewers with content that often resembles what Americans saw on other U.S. cable news outlets. <laughs> India five-day ban The Indian government banned the Al Jazeera TV channel in April 2015 for five telecast days as it repeatedly displayed disputed maps of India. The Surveyor General of India SGI had observed that in some of the maps displayed by Al Jazeera, a portion of Indian territory of Jammu and Kashmir i.e. Pak and Aksai Chin has not been shown as a part of Indian territory. According to the statement, the suspension of its broadcast concerns maps of Pakistan used in 2013 and 2014 that did not demarcate the part of Kashmir under Pakistani control. Pakistan occupied Kashmir or Pak as a separate territory. Once notified by Indian authorities, the channel said it ensured all maps from September 22, 2014, onward used dotted lines and unique shading for the disputed portions. Israel On 19 July 2008, Al Jazeera TV broadcast a program from Lebanon which covered the Welcome Home. Festivities for Samir Kuntar, a Lebanese terrorist who had been imprisoned in Israel for killing four people in a Palestine Liberation Front raid from Lebanon into Israel. 
In the program, the head of Al Jazeera's Beirut office, Ghassan bin Jido, praised Kuntar as a pan-Arab hero and organized a birthday party for him. In response, Israel's government press office GPO announced a boycott of the channel, which was to include a general refusal by Israeli officials to be interviewed by the station, and a ban on its correspondence from entering government offices in Jerusalem. A few days later an official letter was issued by Al Jazeera's director general, Wada Confer, in which he admitted that the program violated the station's code of ethics and that he had ordered the channel's programming director to take steps to ensure that such an incident does not recur. On 15 March 2010, Channel 10 Israel broadcast a video story about the Coastal Road massacre on of March 1978, with two photographs of a victim and a terrorist, both were women, which Al Jazeera's logo appeared upon them. The photographer Shmuel Rahmani, who took these photos, made a lawsuit against Al Jazeera in the Jerusalem District Court. On 19 February 2014, the court ruled that Al Jazeera would pay 73,500 Israeli new shekels to Rahmani, including 7,000 Israeli new shekels which were ruled by a decision on 2 December 2012. On 23 November 2017, a second verdict of 30,000 Israeli new shekels against Al Jazeera was made in the Nazareth District Court, by Article 79A of the Courts Act the law in the Hebrew Wikisource. At the end of 2017 a third lawsuit was made by Michel Gano, an American Christian who has lived in Israel, in the Tel Aviv District Court, after his video of volunteering for the Israel Defense Forces was compared by Al Jazeera to the volunteering for the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. On 15 November 2018, Gano won 96,199 Israeli new shekels from Al Jazeera, also by Article 79A. <laughs> <laughs> Website attacks Immediately after its launch in 2003, the English site was attacked by one or several hackers, who launched denial-of-service attacks, and another hacker who redirected visitors to a site featuring an American flag. Both events were widely reported as Al Jazeera's website having been attacked by hackers. In November 2003, John William Racine II, also known as John Bufo, was sentenced to 1,000 hours of community service and a $1,500 U.S. fine for the online disruption. Racine posed as an Al Jazeera employee to get a password to the network site, then redirected visitors to a page he created that showed an American flag shaped like a U.S. map and a patriotic motto, court documents said. In June 2003, Racine pleaded guilty to wire fraud and unlawful interception of an electronic communication. As of 2012, the perpetrators of the denial-of-service attacks remain unknown. <laughs> Sharia and life Sharia and Life al wa al is an Al Jazeera Arabic show with an estimated audience of 60 million worldwide and stars Muslim preacher Yusuf al Karadawa, who is described as Islam's spiritual dear Abbey. The format of Sharia and Life is similar to that of al Karadawa's earlier programming on Qatar TV as well as Egyptian television shows going as far back as the 1960s. Programs interpreting the Quran or dealing with religious issues were popular from Morocco to Saudi Arabia. The now defunct show has been the repeated subject of controversy. In January 2009, Karadawa stated, Throughout history, Allah has imposed upon the Jews people who would punish them for their corruption. The last punishment was carried out by Adolf Hitler. In October 2010, Karadawa was asked if Muslims should acquire nuclear weapons to terrorize their enemies." Karadawa said he was pleased Pakistan had such a weapon, that the goal of nuclear weapons would be permissible, and provided religious justification quoting Quranic verses urging Muslims, "...to terrorize thereby the enemy of God and your enemy." <laughs> <laughs> Editorial independence Al Jazeera Media Network is owned by the government of Qatar. 
While Al Jazeera has stated that they are editorially independent from the government of Qatar, this assertion has been disputed. In 2010, United States Department of State Internal Communications, released by WikiLeaks as part of the 2010 diplomatic cables leak, said that the Qatar government manipulates Al Jazeera coverage to suit political interests. In September 2012, The Guardian reported that Al Jazeera's editorial independence came into question when the channel's director of news, Salah Negm, stepped in at the last minute to order that a two-minute video covering a UN debate over the Syrian civil war include a speech by the leader of Qatar, Hamid bin Khalifa al Thani. Staff members protested that the speech was not the most important aspect of the debate, and that it was a repetition of previous calls for Arab intervention. The Guardian also said in September 2012 that Qatar had taken steps in recent years to consolidate control of Al Jazeera English. A 13 August 2015 article in The Independent on poor BBC News reporting also made reference to the political bias in Al Jazeera from the Qatar government. Documentaries <inaudible> 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 Al Jazeera's coverage of the invasion of Iraq was the focus of an award-winning 2004 documentary film, Control Room by Egyptian-American director Jahane Nujaim. In July 2003, PBS broadcast a documentary called Exclusive to Al Jazeera on its program Wide Angle. In 2008, Al Jazeera filmed Egypt, a nation in waiting, which documented trends in Egypt's political history and foreshadowed the Egyptian Revolution of 2011. Another documentary, Al Jazeera, An Arab Voice for Freedom or Demagoguery. The UNC tour was filmed two months after the 11th of September 2001 terrorist attack. ISIL and the Taliban. Filmed in 2015 by an Arab Al Jazeera reporter named Najibullah Qureshi, it covers Islamic State's presence in Afghanistan and how they groom children for their causes. It is about Taliban commanders angry about Islamic State's presence, Afghan National Army starting offensives in Achen and two suicide bombers targeting Jandal, a former warlord. Tutu's Children 2017, a documentary about Desmond Tutu's experiment of coaching young professionals to be African leaders. <laughs> Awards In March 2003, Al Jazeera was awarded by Index on Censorship for its courage in circumventing censorship and contributing to the free exchange of information in the Arab world. In April 2004, the Webby Awards nominated Al Jazeera as one of the five best news websites, along with BBC News, National Geographic, Rocket News, and The Smoking Gun. According to Tiffany Slane, the founder of the Webby Awards, this caused a controversy as other media organizations felt it was a risk-taking site. In 2004, Al Jazeera was voted by Brandchannel.com readers as the fifth most influential global brand behind Apple Computer, Google, IKEA and Starbucks. In January 2013, Al Jazeera was nominated for the Responsible Media of the Year Award at the British Muslim Awards. Competitors Al-Mayadeen is a pan-Arabist satellite television channel launched on of June 2012 in Lebanon. The channel, claims Gulf-supported media, aims at reducing the influence of the Al Jazeera and Al Arabiya networks, both funded by oil-rich Sunni Arab countries in the Persian Gulf. However, it is said to plan to present an alternative to mainstream Arab satellite media, largely dominated by these two channels. In response to Al Jazeera, a group of Saudi investors created Al Arabiya in the first quarter of 2003. Despite especially initial skepticism over the station's Saudi funding CF history and a perception of censorship of anti-Saudi content, Al Arabiya has successfully emulated Al Jazeera, garnered a significant audience share, and has also become involved in controversy. Al Arabiya has been severely criticized by the Iraqi and US authorities and has had journalists killed on the job. In order to counter a perceived bias of Al Jazeera, the U.S. government in 2004 founded Al Hura, the free one. Al Hura is forbidden to broadcast to the U.S. under the provisions of the Smith-Munt Act. A Zogby poll found that 1% of Arab viewers watch Al Hura as their first choice, while an Ipsos Mina poll from March to May 2008 showed that Al Hura was drawing more viewers in Iraq than Al Jazeera. 
Citing these figures, Alvin Snyder, author and former USIA executive, referred to Al Hura as a go to network in Iraq. Another competitor is Al Alam, established in 2003 by Islamic Republic of Iran Broadcasting, which broadcasts continuously. It seeks to address the most challenging issues of the Muslim and Arab world in the Middle East. A further competitor is the Rusia Al Yam Channel, the first Russian TV news channel broadcasting in Arabic and headquartered in Moscow, Russia. Rusia Al Yam started broadcasting on 4 May 2007. The channel is established and operated by RIA Novosti, the same news agency that launched Russia Today TV in December 2005 to deliver a Russian perspective on news to English-speaking audiences, and Russia Al Yam is indeed a translation of Russia Today into Arabic. The BBC launched BBC Arabic Television on of March 2008, an Arabic-language news channel in North Africa and the Middle East. This is the second time that the BBC has launched an Arabic language TV channel. As mentioned above, the demise of the original BBC World Service Arabic TV channel had at least contributed to the founding of the original Al Jazeera Arabic TV channel. Deutsche Well began broadcasting in Arabic in 2002. On the 12th of September 2011, the German international broadcaster launched DW Arabia, its Arabic language television channel for North Africa and the Middle East. The network has expanded from an initial two-hour block to 16 hours of daily programming in Arabic starting March 2014. The schedule is completed with eight hours of English language programming. In February 2014, DW announced the acquisition of reprise transmission rights of Egyptian satirist Bassem Youssef's popular show Albernamade. When Euronews started broadcasting its programs in Arabic on 12 July 2008, it entered into competition with Al Jazeera. Arabic is the eighth language in which Euronews is broadcast, after English, French, German, Russian, Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. Since the launch of Al Jazeera English, Al Jazeera directly competes with BBC World and CNN International, as do a growing number of other international broadcasters such as Deutsche Welle, France 24, NHK World, and RT. Topic see also Al Jazeera Effect Corporate Media International News Channels List of Arabic Language Television Channels Media of Qatar State Media Topic References Topic Further reading Abdul Majd, M.M. 2008, Online News Sites and Journalism 2.0, Reader Comments on Al Jazeera Arabic. Triplic, Cognition, Communication, Cooperation, 6 59-76. Abstract and full article, blogspot.com Abdul Majd, M.M., and Herring, S.C. 2008. Arabic and English news coverage on aljazeera.net. In, F. Sudweeks, H. Harakovic, and C.S. E.D.'s, Proceedings of Cultural Attitudes Towards Technology and Communication 2008 Katak 08, Nimes, France, 24 June 27. Abstract and full article, Arabic and English news coverage on aljazeera.net M. Arafa, P. J. Outer, and K. Al Jaber 2005, Hungry for News and Information, Instrumental Use of Al Jazeera TV Among Viewers in the Arab World and Arab Diaspora, Journal of Middle East Media, 1 1, 21-50 Mark Lynch 2005, Voices of the New Arab Public, Iraq, Al Jazeera, and Middle East Politics Today, Columbia University Press N. Malati 2004, Al Jazeera, ISBN 1-86020-593-3 Hugh Miles 2004, Al Jazeera, How Arab TV News Challenged the World, Abacus, ISBN 0-349-11807-8, a.k.a. Al Jazeera, How Arab TV News Challenges America, Grove Press, ISBN 0-8021-1789-9, 2005 reprint, a.k.a. Al Jazeera, The Inside Story of the Arab News Channel That is Challenging the West, Grove Press, ISBN 0-8021-4235-4, 2006 reprint Muhammad El Nawawi and Adil Iskander 2002, Al Jazeera, How the Free Arab News Network Scooped the World and Changed the Middle East, Westview Press, ISBN 0-8133-4017-9, a.k.a. Al Jazeera, the story of the network that is rattling governments and redefining modern journalism, a.k.a.
Al Jazeera, Ambassador of the Arab World, Westview Press, Basic Books, Perseus Books, ISBN 0-8133-4149-3 2003 reprint Eric C. Nisbet, Matthew C. Nisbet, Dietram Scheufel, and James Shanahan 2004, Public Diplomacy, Television News, and Muslim Opinion PDF, 187 Kibibytes, Harvard International Journal of Press, Politics 9 2, 11-37 Donatella della Rata 2005, Al Jazeera. Media e Societa Arabe nel Nuovo Millennio in Italian, Bruno Mondadori, ISBN 88-424-9282-5 Naomi Sacher 2002, Satellite Realms, Transnational Television, Globalization and the Middle East, IB. Tories, ISBN 1-86064-689-1 Tatham, Steve 2006, Losing Arab Hearts and Minds, The Coalition, Al Jazeera and Muslim Public Opinion, C. Hearst & Co. London, published 1 January 2006, ISBN 0-9725572-3-7 Muhammad Zayani 2005, The Al Jazeera Phenomenon, Critical Perspectives on New Arab Media, Paradigm Publishers, ISBN 1-59451-126-8 Augusto Valeriani 2005, Il Giornalismo Arabo, Italian Roma, Carocci ISBN 88-430-3280-1 External links Al Jazeera in English Al Jazeera's official story